Now to Ukraine, where officials say one person was wounded after Russian missiles hit two industrial facilities in one city. This comes as Ukraine continues its counteroffensive against Russia, and officials say the fighting is extremely fierce. CBS News foreign correspondent Ian Lee met with a unit of Ukrainian troops returning from the front lines. They move into position under the cover of darkness. Night vision gives these Ukrainian soldiers the edge against the Russians. Morning brings the command, attack. This soldier, call sign blacksmith, led the first assault. It took us two days to push nearly three miles, he tells me. The Russians were dug in and heavily fortified, but intense artillery fire forced them to flee. The quickness of the Russians' retreat is scattered everywhere in their trenches. Weapons here, rations there. But war has taught them a lesson. Don't touch, he says. Anything could be booby-trapped. Have the Russians been putting up a stiff resistance? When we broke the line of defense, then they have a little panic and they uh, move uh, fast back. Their commander, Anton, tells me how his troops move through the mine-infested tree lines for cover. Be slow to be silent and uh, to be safe. Uh, slow, silent and safe. Yeah. When Blacksmith and his squad reach their final objective, Anton gives the order to dig in. Are you glad to be finally going on the offensive? Uh, you can't win uh, the war with, uh, with defense only and we're glad to move forward. The 108 Territorial Brigade is now getting some R&R, but training never stops. Ukrainian soldiers are recalibrating this BMP-2. In fact, this vehicle right here was captured from the Russians earlier this year. These aren't professional soldiers. Many hadn't held a gun before the war, but now they're battle-hardened warriors. Do you guys believe that you can win this war? 100%. 100 percent everyone believes we'll win, he tells me. Morale is high because we're pushing forward. Everyone wants victory. The one thing these soldiers wish they had more of is tanks. If they had them, they tell me, this war would be over a lot quicker. Amory. Ian, thank you. So Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko claimed yesterday that his country has started taking delivery of tactical nuclear weapons from Russia. Lukashenko also said that he, he wouldn't hesitate to order to use the weapons if his country faced aggression. That contradicts Russian President Vladimir Putin, who previously said Moscow will retain control of the weapons. The move is being closely monitored by the U.S. and its allies, as well as China, which has also cautioned Russia against the use of nuclear weapons in Ukraine. So we're joined now by Samuel Cherub. He's a senior political scientist at the RAND Corporation. Uh, Samuel, good morning. Um, I should point out that Lukashenko very quickly started to sort of dance that back and started to say, oh, of course, I would call Vladimir Putin. And, you know, he sort of uh, um, he, he couched the words later on. Um, but let me ask you about this. Putting nuclear weapons in Belarus, I don't think it expands Russia's abilities significantly in any way. Is this a genuine strategic move by Russia and Belarus to counter the West? Or is this like some sort of sort of posturing? I mean, generally speaking, it's uh, there isn't a military justification for this. Mm. It's not like Russia is so far away from its, uh, you know, NATO adversaries compared to Belarus. After right. all, Belarus is right, you know, uh, smack in between Poland and uh, and and Russia. Um, but you know, I think there is a, a degree of signaling here. There's a degree of, uh, you know, uh, if you can do it, so can I. So you know, mm. the United States reportedly has uh, its own tactical nuclear weapons stationed in a variety of uh, NATO allied countries. Um, and you know, Russia has an attitude of, well, if the U.S. can do it, so can we. Uh, there's also a sort of political dynamic here whereby I think, you know, having nuclear weapons in Belarus kind of uh, keeps Russia's last ally in the region, you know, firmly under Moscow's grip. Um, but I, ultimately, this does seem like some degree of uh, establishing some bargaining room with the U.S. Um, because that's what Russia, in the end of the day, cares about. Right. Which sort of brings me to my next question, because, you know, 
nuclear weapons are nuclear weapons. And I know there's some uh, talk about whether or not Belarus's facilities even have the capabilities, whether the planes that they're getting are, you know, rusted out shells. Um, but a nuclear weapon is a nuclear weapon. So what are the geopolitical implications across Europe of Russia relocating nuclear arms inside another country? So I, uh, Lukashenko is, is sort of notorious for having, uh, for for saying a lot of things. Mm. He's, uh, he, you know, he, he has quite a way with words. But there is no question in my mind that the nuclear weapons themselves will remain under Russian military control. Um, that will be, uh, you know, I have no question about that. Um, regardless of what Lukashenko says, Russia's not going to give its nuclear weapons away to any country, um, even its close allies. The United States isn't either, to be clear, um, mm -hmm. even though we have, uh, you know, we cooperate with our allies in terms of delivering them, the weapons remain in U.S. possession. Um, so there's that. I think, you know, any move of nuclear warheads closer to uh, U.S. allies is a problem, um, and uh, it's going to have to be followed very closely by um, NATO militaries, um, and it's going to make our allies more concerned about Russian intentions. So, you know, I think it's certainly not a good thing. It's not a good thing that there are nuclear weapons in other more countries, mm -hmm. even if they're not in the possession of those countries, because, you know, in theory, they could um, uh, uh, be, you know, Russia could lose control of them more easily in another country than they could in Russia. So this is definitely a negative development, but uh, the extent to which it is really um, a direct threat uh, above and beyond the fact that Russia has 2,000 of these non-strategic nuclear weapons, these tactical nuclear weapons, um, which is a huge number. Um, and uh, and those, you know, in theory could be used in sort of battlefield situations, not, you know, like apocalyptic uh, strategic scenarios. Right. All of that is quite dangerous. Right. Uh, Samuel, thank you very much. Thanks for having me.